the one and only draft app. Top rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and leave us a five star review. I'm Liam Merrill here with Steve Peters and Craig Morgan, and we are in a very special place today. This is not Studio B. This is not our homes. We are at the Tucson Arena here in Tucson, and we just watched the Tucson Roadrunners beat the Ontario Reign 6-5. to five. You know, it's not Studio B. But, but it's just as cold. <laughs> it's just as damn cold as <laughs> Studio B. I had to layer up. My mom I don't know, buddy. Me. I am uh, kind of in a food coma here, and I've got a lot of insulation wow. from all the eating we've been doing between El Charo ice cream i'm sorry what was the name of the ice cream place hub ice cream hub ice cream and of course we had the mini donuts Literally, the mini here at donuts tucson arena awesome. so i'm gonna be fasting for three days i know big but, day for eating here and the good news is we're here on a roadrunner win absolutely we love to see it well we're gonna talk more about everything but first we're gonna bring in tucson roadrunners president bob hoffman welcome to the phx coyotes podcast bob thanks so much for joining us thank you so much for having me welcome to tucson hopefully i heard you guys saw some of the good sights here in town you found some of the finest el charro's been around 100 years is one of the (laughs) oldest mexican restaurants in the state of arizona hub ice cream fantastic amazing and these mini donuts um i mean best if that doesn't bring you back the six five score won't maybe but the donuts will right (laughs) if it's not if it's not best in the ahl it's just best in hockey i think honest to god (laughs) Not helping my post-COVID diet, by the no, way. No, not at all, not at all. We struggle here every day. <laughs> not at all. But we want to we want to talk about a number of things with you. Um, but we've seen some work going on around Tucson Arena. So I'm wondering, for starters, if you could fill us in on some of the plans. What what's going on with the reshaping of Tucson Arena? Yeah, absolutely. It's really it's a it's a big picture of what the downtown of Tucson is becoming. And you guys got to see a little bit of that now. Um, really, if you look back into February of 2020 and into March. The momentum in Tucson was really big in the downtown area. Four new hotels were going up, new restaurants, shops, retail. And then a part of what the Tucson Convention Center was doing was the revitalization with new hotels, parking decks, some beautification things they were doing, and then some things in here in the arena as well. So uh, COVID slowed it down a little bit, a little bit of a pause there. But now it's back in motion and you're seeing all that construction and kind of the fruit of that. Here in the arena, what really helps the roadrunners and some of the things we've been working with the city on to try to You know, the facility's, you know, fairly aged, but it's one that we feel can be a really good American Hockey League barn and something that you guys got to experience tonight with the the atmosphere. Uh, It it doesn't need to be state of the art as some of the arenas in back east and the Midwest. And what we're trying to do is find some improvements that can bring it up a little bit and make the experience for the fans a little bit better. (laughs) Bob, you know, one thing we, we come, we see the National Hockey League game here. We come down to the American League, and it, it just has a different feel. Yeah. Can you tell people that are sitting in Phoenix that are that are on the fence of coming down here what the atmosphere is like here at the TCC? Well, I mean, I, it, it's funny. It's really hard to put a finger on it in some ways because I come to a lot of NHL games as well and see it. But you're right. There's just a different buzz and a different atmosphere. Um, you've got the same fanatics that are there and that those diehards and the jerseys, and hopefully you guys saw many of the different jerseys that we've yeah. supported. And you guys actually came for one of our specialty nights with our pink sweaters for uh, our Hockey Fights Cancer Night. Um, But it's just the atmosphere of families and kids learning the sport, us having to educate some folks on what hockey is, but then also really kind of bringing in and infusing the Midwest and the folks that have transplanted down here. We ran into so many people not knowing from day one, how many hockey fans do we have in Tucson when we came down here six years ago? And we found out that that answer was actually quite a few. We have a lot of people from Chicago, from Minneapolis, from Wisconsin, a lot of people that have retired from Canada down here. So you've got a lot of hockey fans that were just excited to have a team they could kind of grab and rally around. And that atmosphere in here, the buzz, you hear it each and every game. It's a small facility, so you're able to really kind of get it going. Even uh, when you don't have a sellout, you can actually still feel like it does have uh, a sellout crowd and that you've got a lot of people in here with a lot of energy. This is one of those hockey arenas where they actually – encourage you to throw things on the ice which we got to do <laughs> after the second period yeah. with chuck a puck which uh, there'll be some Did debate you, about so, that there is some debate so about actually one of our we'll, pucks won oh yes, really yes. and there's some debate, debate between pd and craig puck. whose puck it was uh, what was the prize you won because hub ice cream is one of them maybe it was, was the ac hotels well there you go it was his puck but we're gonna have to go to the replay to find out flip a coin i want to get back to some of the things that are happening around you you were kind enough to walk me around and show me some of the additions that have come these ribbon boards behind us are one of them but can you walk us through some of the things that are going on the the party deck that you mentioned you things like that yeah no and it, it goes to like we said that fan experience we're trying to make a little bit better and try to create a little bit better um atmosphere here um the ribbon board you mentioned just creates a little bit more of that that big league feel to it it's more of an nhl type arena we have a lot of different signage digital signage opportunities that we're going to be putting in place 
over the next two to three years in, in what's going to be a step-by-step -step process in, in partnership with the city. Some other different spots, like where you have these Roadrunner signs, your fans can't see it, but you guys can. More digital boards there and some different things there. So when you think of um, what that look will be for fans, it's going to be a little bit better for that experience. When you get what I had taken um, you, know, you to take a peek at with the lounge there, They've done some things in the end zone, which was an, uh, really an underutilized space that was just storage, that we've cleared that out. We've put glass in in the wall that you could see through now to the ice and create more of a lounge, a party deck, as you say, kind of up there that fans, it'll seat about 100 people that could get in that particular area, have catering, have their own private bar and enjoy the game. We see it really as being something that'll be uh, not only a benefit potentially for certain nights for season ticket members to be a part of that up there as a club, but then also for uh, businesses here in town that would want to have a group night or be able to bring, you know, 100 employees out and have a little bit larger space because this facility just doesn't have the hospitality uh, nooks and crannies that a Gila River Arena does. No, I'm sorry. And if you, you know, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want to no, monopolize one thing, the whole interview we went here. around and had a chance to talk to some of the fans here. And what, what I found really interesting is how many people go to games here and at Gila River. Yeah. Like, and what I want to stress, right. because I made the drive today, right. and it is so easy to get down here from Phoenix. And I know you're doing great in the local fan base, but, but I want to stress that this is so easy to see hockey that may be a little more affordable, um, fun, exciting, and see the guys that are going to be playing in the future. You've done a great, great job here, Bob. So oh, thank what you. can we do to encourage the people from Phoenix to make the drive? Well, you know, it's really interesting because, you know, we, we in 2018, second year in the American Hockey League, had the fortune of being a, a conference winner, a division winner, and, and having a decent run into the playoffs uh, going into the second round. And with that, the Coyotes fans really started to rally and come down in 2018 and say, that's only a two hour drive and only an hour and a half from the South Valley. And it's not far. You can come. It's affordable. And you get to see the stars of the future. And, um, you know, a lot have really stuck to that. Now, it may only be some that come two, three times a year. Some come a little bit more often, once a month. But I think we're starting to grow that fan base. And for those that haven't come down to check it out, it's a real easy trip. As you said, you can make a night of it and hitting the restaurants here in downtown if you want to stay the night for a two-game set, because we always play two-game sets, uh, much like minor league baseball in that series strategy. Um, so Ontario's back here tomorrow. The team we just beat here tonight are right back here 3 o'clock tomorrow. So you could spend the night as well in one of the hotels downtown and catch a couple of games. And you're seeing not only the stars of the future for the Coyotes, but you're also seeing some of the great names and people that are going to be making a mark as the rivals of the Coyotes in the future as well. So, um, you know, we feel we've got a lot to offer down here and we can do it at a very affordable price. And you, when you look around the arena and see all the jerseys that are Roadrunners jerseys, I'm sure you guys saw many that are Coyotes jerseys, too. The National Anthem singer tonight did a great job in our Hockey Fights Cancer Night wearing an older Coyotes jersey as she was out here, one of the retros. So, um, you know, it, it really is a family and it really is something that uh, we st strategically tried to enhance from day one, um, that coordinated effort to take over hockey in the entire state of Arizona. And that includes the Coyotes and then here at the AAA level, the Roadrunners. Well, we love to hear that. And thank you so much for your hospitality. And to all Coyotes fans, take the trip down. There's, yeah. a few, there's a few games left this season, so make the trip. Bob, thank you so much for joining us on the PHX Coyotes show. We hope to have you back on again. Well, soon. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for coming down. You and your crew, hopefully you had a great time here. And uh, anytime you want to come down, we'd love to host thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Take care. Thanks, awesome. Bob. Well, in a moment, we are going to be bringing on Tucson Roadrunners head coach, Jay Verity. Um, but great talk to Bob. It's cool. I actually was at the first ever Tucson Roadrunners game. Oh, that's cool. That is so cool. So it's kind of cool to now be back here. Is it six years now? That's yeah. what he said. Yeah, this wow. is the sixth season. Sixth it's, season. It's amazing. And just it's to gone, see, yeah, you know, amazing. the stuff that they've added. And, you know, when I was here, when I worked here, when I came here for the first season, there weren't the Roadrunners jerseys like you're seeing now. So great to see. All right. Here comes... <laughs> Guest of the program. You look familiar. Tucson yeah. Roadrunners head coach, Jay Verity. A guest of the program. <laughs> he is not. He yes, is. this is his third appearance third on appearance. a PHNX Coyotes. Appearance. I need a okay. shirt. How do I get a shirt? We'll, 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 we'll hook you we up. We will hook you up with a shirt uh, yeah. because you, this is officially down the I-10. Like we have, Yeah, we actually came. And so yeah. like, the virtual down the I-10. Yeah. It's the real thing. Yeah. First, congratulate you on the big win. I mean, yeah, that, that, that's a team that you're playing against Ontario, and that's a really good hockey club. Um Give us your thoughts post game of what you said to your guys and what you thought about today's game. Well, I just thought we had unbelievable compete for the entire night. It, it was back and forth, and and obviously you look at their guys, Tynan, Ferk, uh, down the list. They can they can change the tide, and they did quickly, like bang bang, a couple goals right away. And I thought our guys did a good job staying with it. I thought we had some guys stand up for each other, some team toughness sticking together in some key situations, and then you know into the game. We take a penalty, 
They find the back of the net. They got an unbelievable power play. But we go out. They pull the goalie. We make good plays. Stick with it. Able to walk away at two points. I thought it was a good effort. Jay, what have been some of the challenges that you faced as a team, as, as a coach this season, and how do you think your guys have responded to it? Yeah, well, I just think our roster's changed a lot. Yeah, like, sure <laughs> you know, you guys don't see us all the time. But <laughs> but we see all the players that come north. Yeah. So. <laughs> we have some players going north, and yeah. that's what we're here to do. Yeah. We're here to get those guys up there and make sure they're ready when they get there. And for the most part, I think our guys have done a relatively good job when they've gone up to the Coyotes, and, and that's what we're proud of. You know, for us, then we have to go find the next group. Yeah. So these guys are coming from all over. We got guys from Fort Wayne. We got guys from Norfolk. We got guys from... Greenville and and then bringing those guys into your group and continuing the culture. You know, like it's easy when you start with a group and you say, hey, we want to keep this culture rolling. Yeah. But now we're, we got guys coming in. We got guys coming out. We have guys injured. Um, so th that's that's tough. But that's what we do. That's the American Hockey League. It's not just us here in Tucson. It's every team. And we look at it as a challenge every day and, and do our best with it. And one, one of the things that you, when you go through the, the, the notes of today's game and, and see who's on the score sheet, it's the names that the Coyote fans are familiar with. I mean, it's McCartney, it's Carconi, it's Yan, Yannick, it's Michelli. And those are the guys that are pulling the rope for you. But that's that's when we talk about the rebuild. Those are the guys of the future. Can you speak a, a few few about those guys that are helping you pull, pull the chain right now? Yeah, well, I think... What's different in Tucson than maybe Ontario is if you look at their guys that are on the score sheet and, and dominant in playing key situations, you see a tie in a guy who's a veteran in the league, yeah. um, who's played some NHL games, but mostly American League. You see a guy like Ferk who's played a lot in the American League. You see guys um, like Dolan and, and Velarde, uh, guys that are prospects, but you know maybe on a second line or even on a third line for them. And when you look at our group, it's one, two, and those guys are in all the situations. They're playing key moments. They're out with the goalie pulled. Obviously, they make plays. They're scoring at a regular pace for us, and it's an exciting time. Jay, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about Matias Michelli. Um, clearly, a guy that a lot of Coyotes fans are watching closely right now because of the season that he's having down here. Some of the things that the development staff has talked about is learning to play on the smaller ice sheet, learning to play in tight spaces. It seems like his game is has gone to another level. What are you seeing down here on a nightly basis? Yeah, well, just individually, I think if you talk to Matisse and ask, hey, how did the season go to start? It was a little tough for him. Mm -hmm. uh, the transition for him is not so much – it wasn't so much the small ice uh, or the area. Obviously, he can stick handle in a phone booth. <laughs> like, he's got no problem with space. Uh, for me, I think it was more him playing both ends of the ice, him having the responsibility – to play 200 feet and if he gets a chance to play in the nhl you need to be a 200 foot player to stay you can't just play in the offensive end and for him i think that's been the learning curve and he's been doing a better job now a lot of times they're getting top line matchups we don't have a matchup team but those guys end up playing other teams top lines quite a bit and the same thing for carconi his 200 foot game has been outstanding for us over the last 20 games what's driving michelli's offensive production though is it just maturity confidence uh, he's confident yeah. uh, i think it's just his ability to make plays like mm -hmm. you you saw him tonight like there's no situation that he become drabbled in all of a sudden the puck is in his feet he scoops it out his head's up he's ready to make the next play he does a lot of things um the talented players do uh, he's been good here all right, Jay, one last question before we let you go, because we got another game here tomorrow. And my question is, how do you regroup to play the same team tomorrow? And it's an afternoon game, I believe. So kind of a quick turnaround. Um, how do you regroup to play Ontario again tomorrow? Yeah, well, that's the challenge for our group right now is we have to wake up with the same attitude, the same intensity that we approach tonight, tomorrow. And that's been a little bit of a problem for our group. It's a challenge when you have younger players. That's what we have to instill in them as they're continuing to develop and be able to do that again and do it again on Wednesday and do it again next Friday and do it again next Saturday. That's, uh, that's something we're learning how to do here. Jay, I got one more thing and just kind of, I don't know if you know this cause you're actually working and <laughs> coaching today. So you probably missed them. Try to work knows. when you showed up in the coach's room earlier. Too, <laughs> no. so I'm, a, I'm a pain in the ass. <laughs> did you see, so did you see the Toronto Maple Leafs box score today? I did not. Did you see how many points Michael Bunting had today? 
I did not. He had five points today for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So did it, he gets a twenty. I don't know if he got he's leading rookies in points. Yeah, he's leading yeah, he, rookies he was, in points yeah, in the National Hockey League. He's right got now. forty points now. So, so the, I just want to let you know that because it's it's a, it's a feather in your hat and a testament to the work you guys do here to develop players, whether they play for the big club, which obviously is the goal, or they move on to do something else. So, great job that you're doing here, Jay. Uh, you've done fantastic things for these kids, and so lucky to have you in the program. Yeah, it's the entire staff. Actually, I think um, creating an environment for guys to get better. Uh, and sometimes that environment isn't always easy. There's a lot of challenges in that environment. And I think uh, our coaching staff, our training staff, strength conditioning staff, player development, it's an entire team. Obviously, you walked into the coach's room before the game, and there's yeah. there's a lot of people there. Yeah. Um, and I think all those people do um, a lot of hard work behind the scenes they don't get credit for. Well, Jay, we promise you have two players coming on here. We promise <laughs> to make it quick. We will get them to bed early. <laughs> just a couple of questions. Is that a hook off. sign we just saw? Yeah, there? and they're off to bed. I promise. We'll make it quick. All but right, thanks th- for your time, Jay. We really appreciate me. it. Thanks. It's nice to see you guys in yeah, person seriously. instead of in uh, <laughs> yeah. Adrian's yeah. office there. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Well, thanks, thanks Jay. Jay. We Jay. appreciate Have it. Have a good we'll see you next time. All right. I, I think, think first up, we're going to have Michael Carcone, who scored a hat trick tonight. Big night for him. <laughs> Welcome in. Come on. Take a seat. Welcome to the PHNX Coyotes podcast, Michael Carcone, hat trick tonight. Can you hear Michael? <laughs> Can you hear us? Yeah. All yeah. right. Welcome in. I well, guess the first thing we need, we need to find out is what happens to all the hats? <laughs> I have no idea. No, you don't get to keep all the hats. No. I've, I've always wondered about that. You know, I, I'm, I'm okay with charity getting them, but short of that, I feel like the player should at least get the choice of some of those hats. Uh, you know what? Actually, uh, when I came off for the start of the game, uh, a young girl you know, signed it and said congrats, and I kept that hat. Uh, it's in my locker, so that's always nice. But uh, at the same time, it is nice uh, that the hats go to charity, especially on a night like that. Michael, what's driving your season? What What do you think are the ingredients that are producing for you right now? In number 72. <laughs> I think that's yeah. an easy answer. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, he's a great player, uh, one of the best playmakers in the league. So, uh, you know, it's really easy. Just got to get open on the ice, and, and he's going to find you. Yeah, well, you just hit the 20 goal mark tonight. Fantastic. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Tell the fans that are that are sitting in Phoenix right now a little bit more about what Michael Carcone's style of game is. What are you and what can they expect from you in the future? Uh, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a fast skater. Um, you know, I work hard. Uh, I compete. I got a good shot. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit feisty. So, <laughs> <laughs> we saw that tonight. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think those are the main ingredients for me. What do you uh, what do you make of this season? It, it hasn't been an easy season for the Roadrunners, but how do you guys think you've responded to the challenges? And, and, and like Jay was saying earlier, a lot of times guys shuttle back and forth between the AHL, but you guys have had a lot of challenges this season. How have you guys managed to battle through that? You think? Uh, just sticking together. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes when you you lose a couple in a row, it's easy to point fingers at guys and and, and get upset. Uh, but that's what this league is. Guys are in and out. Guys are getting hurt. Guys are going up. Uh, and you have to find a way to win. So I think we've been doing a pretty good job with that. Um, there's been a lot of movement this year, and it's it's been uh, it's been pretty good though. The guys are guys are sticking together. Everyone gets along in that room. Uh, that's one of the main reasons I wanted to sign here is because I like the guys in that room. So uh, no, it's been great. I think we're gonna probably see you up in Phoenix at some point, Sue. But <laughs> thank you for sitting down with us for yeah. a few minutes today, yeah. and congrats yeah. on that. Congrats trip. on a great game. Yeah, yeah. Nice thank job. You. keep up the hard work. I appreciate it. Awesome. A lot of fun. Thank, thank you. you, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Okay, and now go to bed. We told Jay you're going right to bed right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right to bed. <laughs> All right. One more player heading in. Another second-time guest of the program. I know. Because he was on Down the I-10 earlier in the year. What's up, Matias? <laughs> Matias Michelli is joining us. Welcome to the PHNX Coyotes podcast, Matias Michelli. How are you tonight? Good. Great. Um, we just asked Michael Carcone what the secret was to his production, and he said number 72. <laughs> Why are you guys clicking together? What, what what can you say about the way you guys work together? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's pretty easy. I uh, When I have the puck, he gets open, and I just give it to him, and he scores. Even if it's between the legs. As we saw. <laughs> By the way, that was a very nice play on that goal off the wall. Thank you. Uh, very nice. Now you were flying tonight. So uh, how have you been able to adjust your game from the larger ice surface to the smaller ice surface? Has it been a big adjustment, or is it no big deal? You lace up your skates and you go play. Yeah, I mean, uh, the first eight games were tough for me personally. Uh, uh, it, I mean, it's a big adjustment to uh, to come here and play. Play here, the game is different, way different. And uh, I think after the first eight games, I've been, I've been doing a really good job. 
Matthias, I wanted to ask you the same thing I asked Jay. Um, when, you, when you're having the kind of production that you're having right now, I don't know if that's just a product of maturity, of confidence, or if you've made some adjustments in your game that are allowing you to produce on a consistent basis. Yeah, I mean, we have a great alliance, working really well. Uh, I mean, I don't know what to really say. It's just, it's, just, it's just working. When when the development staff talks to you about what you need to do to take it to the next level, to get to the NHL, what were some of those things, and how do you think you've implemented those things? Yeah, I mean, uh, getting a real uh, a little better on D zone and uh, those little things on the wall, and uh, not turning the puck over so much. I mean. I think I'm doing a better job than I did uh, early th earlier this year, and uh, I just have to get better every day. Matias, what can you tell us about the Tucson Arena atmosphere, maybe for some Coyotes fans who haven't been down to a game here? How would you, how would you describe the atmosphere here? Yeah, we love our fans. It's a great atmosphere here every game. and uh, yeah. As I was saying to Bob Hoffman, this is the only arena where I've come where we're allowed to throw things on the ice. <laughs> I know. And throw the puck. <laughs> yeah, chuck -a -puck. They missed the chuck -a -puck. They're in yeah, the chuck-a-puck. Do you guys ever see it? Actually, the chuck -a -puck? Do you I even know what I'm talking it. about? No, no, really. That's crazy. <laughs> it's like this tradition of after, after the second period, people throw pucks on the ice to try and hit targets. You guys yeah. never see it because yeah. you're in the locker room. You win 100 bucks if you hit the helmet. So. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> it's kind of a big deal. So with two assists tonight, I don't know if you knew this either. You are now, you have the second most points in a single season in Roadrunners history, and you're on pace to to set the record. You, you just passed Dylan Strom tonight. Were you even aware of that? No, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nobody's no filled you in deal. on these yeah. things, man. <laughs> I tell you what, Matthias, one of the people I wanted to see play in person was you, um, and you did not disappoint. Every time your line stepped on the ice, you were a threat to score. You're exciting. You're offensive. And I just I wish I could get this atmosphere to people that are watching back in Phoenix to say, hey, it's so close. Come down here and watch these guys. You were great tonight. Keep up the hard work. And we hope to see you in Phoenix really soon. Thank you. Appreciate Absolutely. It. Thank yeah. you so much. Get some rest before tomorrow's game. We yeah, go to sleep. Yeah. 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 I think we are going to see you in Phoenix very soon. Yes. I think that that's the, all indications are well, you're going to be up there so. soon. So yeah. let's hope so. I know nice you, got, job, you, you had the COVID test the last time, right? Just yeah. you were about yeah. to debut. Such a bummer. Yeah. Uh, it was a bummer. But you'll, you'll get another chance. So we'll see you soon, Matthias. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, so Thanks so much for joining Thanks. us. We Thank appreciate you. you. All right. Back to back to back. Interviews. Oh my goodness! Woo, we made it through. But all, I mean, awesome guests. We got a Zamboni guests. going behind I us know, now we too. Do. It's Can fun. we interview the Zamboni driver? <laughs> Just bring it's him on late. next. It's well, well, before we move on and talk a little bit more about the game and our day in Tucson. Um, you can actually bet on the American Hockey League on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. So if you you know make the trip down and want to make it a little bit more exciting for yourself, you can bet on the AHL on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. And this week at DraftKings, if you sign up using that promo code PHNX and bet a dollar on any NBA team and they win, you'll get $150 in free bets. So check that out. And the existing customers can do same-game parlays. You can do it on not just the NBA, but all of the sports as well. We love the DraftKings Sportsbook app. So sign up using that promo code PHNX, bet a dollar on any NBA team and get $150 in free bets if they win. That's 21 and over, Arizona only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. New customers only, minimum $5 deposit. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. And I know this game, you know, we were here, but AHL games aren't super accessible for people to watch. So yeah, right. we'll do our best to kind of summarize what happened yeah <laughs> no i know well it, it, it's one of those things when you get those games in the american league it's everything that you wanted you wanted to see the guys that you came to see play get points they did you wanted yep. to see a little bit of the rough stuff there was a little bit of fighting there's you a fight in the that. first few minutes yep and good grief we got to see some cowbell and i know oh my like, gosh what the hell got a cowbell? <laughs> what's with the cowbells in the american league well we talked to the cowbell guy tonight and that video Literally. will be coming out on the PHNX Coyotes Twitter sometime this week in the PHNX Sports YouTube because his jersey literally said Cowbell, cowbell guy. guy. So you missed that part, but yeah. he's yeah. literally the Cowbell guy. So you'll have to tune in to the YouTube channel <laughs> next week to see all of the Cowbell people here at the TCC. It was a great experience. It was a great game. Um, you know, we talked about Michelli and some of the plays he made in tight, yeah. his ability to protect the puck, his ability to skate in tight areas. He was fantastic tonight. I wanted to ask you this. It, when you when you think about what the Coyotes are going to look like next season and you look at Matias Michelli's progression, I was talking to Bob Hoffman about this earlier. It's like he feels like he's ready. What do you do with a guy like that when he's producing at this level, when he's shown he can he can adapt and do those sorts of things that you're going to need to, to do to succeed at the next level? Do you put him in the NHL next season or do you worry about the situation you're putting him into with the Coyotes probably going to be as – 
as bad as they are this it's, year. It's going to be interesting to see how they build this roster next year compared yeah. to how they built it this year. And that's going to be the big key. Um, what I hope for Matias Michelli, I hope after the trade line, deadline between now and the end of the season, I hope he gets an opportunity to play. I he hope will. he gets to see what it feels like and how will you prepare, the speed, how it's different so that when he comes back here, he can go, okay, this is what I need to work on. This is what I need to get better at. This is how I'm going to make it to the next level. And honestly, if the team is built next year like it is this year where it's a lot of the expiring one-year contracts of the older players, I think it's probably better for Matias Michelli to start here in Tucson. But again, maybe they turn the corner and they go, hey, maybe let's let's fill it up with the young guys and let's make a run for it. Yeah, I just I wonder about, you know, Bill Armstrong's stated philosophy, you know, over-baking guys in the AHL. It's, it's never a bad move, right? It's it's work. We've seen it work for franchises in the past. Of, of course, everybody talks about Kenny Hall and the Detroit Red Wings, the ones that did that so often with their players. But I always think it's a good idea to make sure that the guy is fully ready. And again, when you're, when you're talking about a situation, Bill Armstrong has said this as well. We don't want to put guys in bad situations. So that's, that's an interesting storyline. We're going to, this is one of the things that we're going to be watching this off season. The thing that I loved about tonight's game, and you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but all the players that have been on our radar this whole season covering the Coyotes, but also doing down the I-10, all of those players were on the stat sheet tonight. Yeah. Michelli and Carcone, who we just spoke to, Jan Yannick, all players that Coyotes fans are familiar with. Ben McCartney, ben McCartney the guy that we like yeah. right out of training camp, seventh so round draft pick. It was just so mm. like it was so cool because we've been talking about it all year to actually be here in person and see it happen and be in this environment and see all of the Roadrunners jerseys just to see how this market has evolved since it started six years ago. It's just incredible to see. I want to, you know. I, there's there's been some talk and uh, Javier Gutierrez in a Q&A that I did with him earlier when they gave the tour of the ASU multipurpose arena alluded to some issues here. You know, they, they want to see some upgrades. And Bob told us about some of the things that are happening here. I wonder what the future is for the Coyotes AHL franchise. Now, they signed a, a 10 year lease here. They're in year six. So they got four more years on the lease to me. I think there's a danger maybe of oversaturating the market if you've got the Coyotes, you've got ASU hockey, and you've got an AHL team in the same market. And then when you're talking about Tucson, this is the second largest market in the state. It makes so much sense to me to keep the team down here. I think this is an important market if you want to build your footprint throughout the state. So something else to watch. But I, I hope they I hope they get what they want out of this arena first, and I hope the Roanerders stay in Tucson. I, I came I, lucky enough when I was still working here for the team. Um, we toured this facility before it became the home of the Tucson Roadrunners. And we went in the facilities and the locker rooms and you go, Ooh, yeah. I'm not so sure. I don't know if they can pull this thing off, but I tell you what, this is fantastic. Like it, it was a the, the vantage points in the building were great. The facilities underneath are great. I, I think this team belongs in Tucson. I agree with you. I don't think you saturate the market. I hope it survives because I tell you what, and I don't make this drive often. My son did go to school here, so I've made it. It is literally autopilot. It was so easy to get yeah, here, yeah. and it's right off the freeway. I had fun, and I'm looking forward to seeing these guys play again. A couple of the things that Bob did mention, they're building like these mini luxury boxes up top. Um, they've got a new scoreboard coming a couple years down the road. They can't do a center-hung scoreboard, I was told, because it's too low. You'd uh. be, it's too bad, right? You'd like to see that. But, there's, yeah, you saw we were yeah. up in one of those little mini box areas. So yeah. some of those things, like the team areas we've talked about, I, I feel like the coach's office is yeah, a little sure. tight. But there's not much room. There's really not anything that they can do over there. Well, so you work with look, what you've got. Look what's evolved since the team came here because now the U of A hockey team is going to have their own arena. They've been sharing this building for six years with Tucson, with the Roadrunners. But just, you know, to see that that there's more ice. And that's always what we say. Some ice in Tucson, Some, right? Yeah, more, like more than one. This yeah. was the only rink. I met people when I was here that they would drive two hours to Phoenix every, like, multiple days a yeah. week just so their yeah. kids could – play hockey Chandler and Gilbert yeah, yeah. so just to, yeah. to see how hockey has evolved in Tucson and Arizona as a whole but especially here I really really hope that this team stays because the fans here are so passionate <laughs> yeah but you're right you, when, when they build that new building for U of A we're talking about it's going to be an influx of senior hockey men's hockey kids mm -hmm. hockey it's just great for hockey in yeah. the state of Arizona as a whole and I don't just mean here it helps it's more competition for the high school teams that are playing in, in the Phoenix area can come down here and play I do want to make one comment to someone in commenting in the chat it's hard to see here it, and I'm old. Did you, Karen, these, did you see what Karen said? Can read it. Did you see what oh, Karen, Karen said about said, Chuck I love doing Chuck a Puck back in Peoria, Illinois. It's, a haz it's hazardous when you sit in the first few okay. rows, though. Well, why is that important, Leah? Because when I chucked my puck, I hit someone. <laughs> when Leah, can you say that again? 
when I, I chucked my puck? <laughs> when I chucked my Espo, puck. you saw the stretcher rolling by <laughs> earlier, right? So, yeah. Well, well, support kid in the front Saul row. I thought the pucks would be hard. I was like, why aren't they hard? Because of people like me. <laughs> who have yeah. no aim. These were nerve pucks we were chucking on the ice, by the way. Saul, I hope we've paid our attorney's fees. Still kind of was me that hit the target. Also, not Petey, but, also uh, you know. um, Charles commented, did Craig bring his cowbell? Craig. Uh, I didn't bring my cowbell. That it would have been miss. a little awkward. Literally, literally the only place a giant cowbell that you can ring it. Would have been here. Like in yeah, the studio, it's, B, it's a little tight, buddy. Uh, yeah. A little tight. <laughs> yeah. Buddy count. Here would have worked. <laughs> buddy count. Not so much studio. Not B. so much a side count tonight, though. We no, no count, size. So. It was great. No. You know why? It's because we started the night with donuts. We did. So we did have <laughs> we did have stats from tonight's game, and we kind of already got over oh, yeah. the game. What should we just pull them out? Just yeah, pull, pull up the yeah, numbers. Pull we made the graphic. numbers. Mine as well. You did all that work. Look at that. Six five. Uh, final score, Roadrunners 33 shots to Ontario's 41. Oh, look at this. The got Arizona Coyotes affiliate getting outshot and, and winning. winning. There it is. It, it runs in the family. Right the formula. It runs in the family. <laughs> absolutely runs um, the formula. And, and on the bottom of that graphic, it said PD side count. None. He had, None. He had a great time. I, I really had a good time. There was one Just there. Um, one out. By the way. Snuck it out. Yeah, by the way. <laughs> oh, sorry, um, Jacob. So I, my, the donuts are in my pocket. Oh, how do you, you have some left? Literally, how do you not eat them all? Seriously, how did you stop yourself? We went to El Charo, and then we got ice cream. Like, I'm sorry, Saul. Did you eat all your donuts? <laughs> did you eat all your donuts, Jacob? Did you eat all yeah. your donuts? Yeah, of course, so. everyone well, ate their they're donuts. They're going to be donuts for the car ride. Yeah, home. that's oh, okay. true. They're a little. They got to get them when they're hot. I, I will say that my last <laughs> thing on donuts. I, I sound like Craig talking about hot dogs. I'm going to overdo the donuts here. You couldn't stop the smell. As soon as you hit that corner of the concourse, yeah. it smelled like the state fair, and it smelled like those damn donuts. <laughs> yeah. I'm coming back for the donuts because oh, yeah. you can't get them anywhere. No, you can't. Okay. That's my. You that's can't. my last thing on donuts. I promise. Okay. Well. Craig is actually going to stay here. and actually, These will be my car snacks for the ride home. Craig's staying overnight because you got to start. Can we, can we tease, can we tease it? this story? Yeah, sure. Okay. Tease the, so you're, you're staying because you're going to interview someone. Tomorrow. I'm talking to Boko and Mama tomorrow. Um, yeah, that's that's going to be a deep dive. Uh, on he's, he's got such a fascinating backstory, and obviously he has been outspoken, needfully outspoken uh, on the incidents of racism in hockey recently, but that's there's so much more to his story than that, and that's what I'm going to be diving into so I get a chance to interview him at length tomorrow. I think that'll be a really great one. So if you want to read that story and more, because Craig's always putting up stories, head over to gophnx.com. <laughs> Just throwing them up. Sign up to <laughs> become a member today. When you sign up, you can get a shirt. Petey and I are wearing our PHNX yep, shirts. Um, we saw a couple people here actually yes, wearing Cody yeah. the Coyote we shirts. Them out. So we saw a red one. and was Yeah, it was a black one. A black she had a black one. one. Yeah, so great to see that yeah. um, around. So if you want to... Sign up for the year. You can get a shirt or your first month 50 cents. But check out the PHNX locker because there's tons of amazing shirts in there. And Absolutely. members get deals on merchandise every week. So. Yeah, and stickers. You know what? It was good to go to a sporting event and see a PHNX shirt. I was and, pretty jacked about that. That's pretty cool. And we met a ton of people from our members only Discord tonight. Yep. Yeah, so, we did. So thank you, everybody, who came and said hi to us today in Tucson. It was, it was a really great meeting, putting faces to the members because it really this is a family and it feels like a family. So when everyone was coming, it was like, oh, hey, like, yeah. you know, it, it was, really it was cool. like, even though I never met some of them in person, it felt like I knew them. So great to see. Well, before we wrap here, there is some NHL news we should talk about. It's very yeah. important. It's very, very important. important. The Montreal Canadiens won tonight. We, I feel like we need Slindy's. Uh... Rebuild, I know. Rebuild, I, I can try my best. Okay. Go. Rebuild reminder. It's pretty good. That's actually really good. <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, impressive. She was texting me. She had FOMO. She okay. wasn't on this trip, but um, big for the Coyotes. Yeah, Montreal Canadiens, uh, <laughs> five in a row. Yeah, like five in keep, a row. Keep rolling. Who Especially if the price. Coyotes are going to win two of their last three. We yeah. need Montreal right. to keep winning. Yeah, the Coyotes got to stop that. Yeah, I'll tell you what, <laughs> they're getting their chance now. And in that out right now. When do they play again? Tomorrow. What? Winnipeg matinee. <sighs> So we'll be back. Okay, at that's it. a sign. Just, that's an official sign. Just like the Roadrunners, that we'll be back is an at official tomorrow sign. afternoon. <laughs> Eight o'clock, seven thirty game, Tucson game, and they got to play at two tomorrow. Can we push that one to seven? Can we call somebody? If that game was at seven, you would be so upset. It was. Yeah, at that's seven. probably true. I'd be upset anyway. He's fine. Yeah, he's <laughs> fine to reason. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. I know, right? That's fair. Can we get a side, Petey? No, it's, I'm okay. good. I got it. <laughs> you don't do. You don't perform. No, I'm good. Um, Karen asked how the tamales were. We didn't have tamales, so but Craig Karen, is going to pick uh, some Yeah, up. Karen, I, I'm getting Craig. the tamales because, as you know, Karen, they sell tamales <laughs> frozen. There's a separate part of El Charo where you can buy the frozen tamales. And I brought a cooler down because I'm going to be putting those tamales <laughs> in the cooler. And I'm bringing them back for myself and for I, I others who have requested them it. as well. I just so, I don't get it. What, I don't you get, don't like I, tamales? No, I, I mean, have you had their corn food. tamales? 
It's food. You, you, you ain't like, just going what? crazy about donuts. You eat food. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bringing it home in a freezer. It's a cooler, Petey. It keeps them frozen. <sighs> Do you Even want if they're live? I, mean, I get that live. I get it. But freezer? Not, no, they're home? not live tamales. I, I no, can... but the experience. <laughs> <laughs> they we're off the rails. It's late. It's... Oh, Lord. <sighs> we didn't even scratch the surface of all the food I'd want to eat here, but there's just not enough time. But I guess a great trip. that means we'll have to come back, and I would love yep. to come back. Great Are we going for a slice after this? No? No, I'm going no. home. Look at Sal's like, yeah, I'm, and we're Saul's getting a slice. Driving, so we like, have ah, let's go for a slice. Okay, I'll let's bring the it. donuts. <laughs> I, got, I got us covered. I got us covered. Well, any other notes from the trip, from this game, from our interviews today, or just the They're NHL? turning the lights out, honestly. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. a lot of fun. I'm, I, it's a lot of fun. I'm glad. I'm glad yeah, we made the trip down there. Yeah, me too. And if and if you're you've been thinking about making the trip, do it. It's amazing. A great time. Um, Tucson Roadrunners, great hockey. So thank you so much, everyone, for following along on social media at PHNX underscore Coyotes. We are getting very, very, very close to Petey having to do a TikTok <laughs> dance. Just saying. Uh, Trying to are. hit that 3,000 follower mark at PHNX underscore <laughs> yeah. Coyotes. So, yeah. yes. so Petey, give us Does Petey know that we picked out the dance? Okay. Oh, right, no. We'll drop we that picked out the later. dance on the drive. We'll drop yeah. that on him later. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, so coming coming soon. So give us a follow. Oh, my God. They're doing it behind the camera. I, don't, I need to end this now. Oh, Wait, but gosh. before you do, I just want to give a shout out and a big thanks to all the Roadrunner yes. staff and Adrian, Adrian Denny, Denny, and Denny, and Bob Hoffman, Hoffman, Adrian, Denny, yeah, Jay so Verdi, many people, everybody here at the organization, today. so many people. Yeah, and the TC, it was great. Absolutely, great time. So thank you, everyone. We will be, I guess, live already tomorrow. Coyotes oh. post game after the Winnipeg Jets. So tune into our PHNX Sports YouTube channel for that one. And until then, have a great Saturday night, everyone, and cheers from Tucson. Thank you.